1945, peace. Thousands of men turned from serving in the armed forces to work and live again in New Zealand. Back to the old job. But for some, the old job couldn't be done. The Disabled Servicemen's Re-Establishment League, however, had seven training centres throughout the Dominion ready to help. Fostered by the RSA after World War I, the League now received government assistance. It was appointed an agent of the Rehabilitation Board. Into the centres went men who had to learn new jobs. Disabled men who wanted no charity but a fair chance. Many of the men had first to learn how to use artificial limbs before starting on a training course. The League had to study each man's disability, his background, his inclinations, his needs. They had to estimate his chances. As disabilities were studied and overcome, more and more training courses were developed in different centres. Even a one-armed man could learn to make mops if a machine could be altered to suit him. For hundreds of men, 22 courses were soon available. Courses designed to turn them out skilled tradesmen. The trade training courses were thorough. They varied from one to three and a half years. To qualify for training, a man had to be at least 40% disabled. Old skills were revived, among them weaving, a rhythmical job that could be learnt despite severe handicaps. To sell products made in the training centres, the League opened shops. And the shops also took in work such as watch and clock repairing. Skilled trades suited to men who had to work in peace and quiet. Conditions that could also be found in jewellery making. Instructors experienced in teaching disabled men knew how nimble fingers on one or two hands could be trained for leather work and other light industries. Working in wood is a creative skill that attracted many men. In all courses during training, they receive government subsidized wages that don't affect their pensions. The main object of the League is to re-establish the men in civil life. But where disabilities prevent this, they're given permanent work in the centers. Here they maintain a steady output of many different products. Surgical boot making is a specialized trade. The League found that disabled men could be taught it, for these men often understood its requirements only too well. Another course that grew out of the men's own needs is the manufacture of artificial limbs. Today, men trained by the League serve amputees, both civilian and ex-servicemen, throughout New Zealand. Thus, through a Dominion-wide trade training scheme, men had the chance to fit themselves for new jobs. Jobs they could do despite disabilities. But work was not all. Recreation and education were not forgotten. Here, a lunch hour economics class learned something of the world they fought for and what makes it tick. Disabilities forced some men to change from indoor to outdoor occupations. To meet their needs, the League developed two farms. This one near Napier for training in market gardening and horticulture. Men who were once mechanics and printers learned to make a good living from the good earth. At Milson, near Palmerston North, is another farm. This was purchased by the government during the war and handed over to the League, who had found disabled men keen to learn every job that comes the farmer's way. Training here has shown that even amputees can make out as farmers. 
This man, Doug Gollan, while a prisoner of war, lost both legs below the knee through frostbite on a forced march across Germany. Having started farming before the war, he aims to continue. To learn farming with experienced farmers to teach them was a natural choice for New Zealanders needing an outdoor life. Good accommodation, good facilities, a well-run farm and understanding of their difficulties are helping men here become efficient farmers. Thus, men have not been lost from our most important industry. Branch committees of the League in each centre, representing many public bodies, have so far completely re-established 370 men throughout the Dominion. At Taronga is the home of Jack Marshall, built by the housing department to plans he drew himself. It has features that meet his own needs, handrails and wide doorways, for instance. For Jack can't use artificial legs. He had both legs burnt off while serving with Bomber Command. He drives his own car, given to him by the people of Taronga and altered by local engineers to suit him. married his nurse and his family come out to see him drive off to work. Before the war, Jack was a shunter on the local railways. Now he goes daily to a desk job in the goods office. have helped Jack Marshall live again. Typical of the League's work in training men and helping them get a job again is Dallas Datsun. Once a cinema projectionist, he lost an arm in Tunisia, was trained by the League as a French polisher, and now works for a cabinet-making firm in Auckland. The League also helps those who wish to set up in business for themselves. Les Sylvester and Jeff Steed are now kept busy running their own surgical boot making and footwear repair business in Auckland. Once both men were farmers, but their disabilities forced them into indoor jobs. In Christchurch, Charlie Ford has a basket making business set up in his own home. Disabled through internal injuries, he spent three years training at the Christchurch Centre. Now he's busy on his own account. The demand for basketware is high, for the craft of basket making had almost died out until the League revived it. Just how far disabilities can be overcome is shown by Tom Wood, who works on telephone repairs in the Post and Telegraph workshops in Dunedin. He worked here before the war, and now, though totally blind, He's back on the job. Throughout its work, the League has aimed at giving the men a good chance of finding places for themselves in our communities, on equal footing with their fellow men. Doug Gollan, the double-leg amputee we saw at the Milson farm, has now finished his training. He's taking his wife-to-be to look over the land that will soon be theirs. The League, with government assistance, helps each man who stays the course on their training farm 
acquired a farm of his own. Treatment and training of our disabled servicemen is a post-war credit of which New Zealand can be proud. <laughs> <laughs> 